Let's get started by creating and setting up your QuickBooks point of sale company file. Once you have installed your QuickBooks product, you'll find the green icon on your desktop called QuickBooks point of sale 2013. You'll double click on your QuickBooks file and you'll see this very large icon populate. Now this is, this is a faster computer. On some of the slower computers, that screen may stay up for just a little bit. Just make sure you don't cut, double click on that icon again. It will, in some cases, start two instances of point of sale and then you'll run into some problems. Now we're going to start a new company file. Typically you would come to a new company file screen like you'll see in just a minute. But because I already have a QuickBooks file in here, it opens up to a QuickBooks file. We want to click on Company Operations, and then we're going to start a new company file. Now, if you're going to be working in a multi-user, you can initially start it as a multi-user, or you can start the multi-user later. You'll click on Next, and you're going to give your company file a name. So I'm just going to call it Test. And you can also, at this point, decide whether it's a headquarters store or a remote store. Now, if you're not sure right now, or you want to change a store to a remote store later, you can always do that later. You're going to click on Create, and it'll create the company file, and then it'll start walking us through the initial setup. Now, while this is still activating, let me go over some of the licensing for your QuickBooks point of sale. First of all, you need to decide how many stations you're going to have, whether you're going to have one station, just a register at the front, or whether you're going to have a receiving department, which is uh, in the, usually in the back side of the store. Now, the back side of the store, if you have a receiving department, doesn't necessarily have to have the equipment. It just has to have a license of QuickBooks. So you do have to decide how many users you're going to have. Now that it's pulled up, we can look at the different tabs one by one. Now, this is just a very basic initial setup. And this is taking information that I already had in here from my previous uh, setup for QuickBooks, or for my point of sale. So we have the receipt. You'd enter in all your store information. The additional information could be maybe a phone number, or a fax number, or your website address. You can always change this later, but this is by default the, the receipt message that you're going to see. And you can either click on each tab, or you can simply click on Next, and it'll walk you through each tab. We're going to be setting up sales tax in a different chapter, so we're going to say no for now. But I will say this, when you're setting this up, if you have a multi-county multi rate, you'll want to say no for now and then set it up as we're going to go over in a later chapter. Click on Next again. Now, you have to decide who your merchant service is going to be. Obviously, using the Intuit Merchant Service would make it much easier for you to use point of sale. There, you can use other merchant service companies, but you'll have separate equipment. Usually, you'll have a long-term contract, and you'll pay equipment fees with that. Within the point of sale, it does make it easier to use the, the merchant services inside point of sale. So we're going to say no to the accepting credit cards just because we don't have a merchant service set up to do live transactions. And then hand in hand with your merchant services, um, you also can get gift cards. Gift cards are highly recommended, and again, using the Intuit Merchant Services is highly recommended as well. The gift cards would allow you to, to better manage um, any credits that are outstanding, uh, as well, for example, returns, as well as um, help boost your sales, um, especially during the holiday season. Next, you'll have your hardware. Now, we're not setting up hardware in this particular session, uh, but there, we will go over the workstation preferences during, during our setup uh, later on, and I'll walk you through the hardware setup. Next is going to be complete, and then you'll click on done, and that gives you your basic initial setup. And that concludes creating and setting up your QuickBooks point of sale file.